Hello my soccer universe. The weather outside is awful. However, the action on the field yesterday was really, really cool. I have had to deliver quite some interesting games, uh, quite some turnarounds. And I have to say this was more exciting than the, all the Champions League action that we saw previously. Uh, we had a pretty big comeback in the Europa League with Sevilla coming out of nowhere to draw it. We also, the Belgian power continues. The Belgians had a really, really good eve, eve, evening with uh, two draws and one win and probably two teams from Brussels moving on. Uh, Feyenoord got a pretty big win and then in the Conference League, I said it, Purple Power, Fiorentina really looked the part. It was a rather exciting open game, but the way then they just sliced through uh, Lech Poznan was also rather impressive overall. And I have to say this Fiorentina team really looks like the team that might win this Conference League, which I'm very much excited about. Because Fiorentina have, have, haven't won anything in a long, 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 long time. And then there was also the goal of the evening by Nice, by Nice's Mofi. What a strike uh, just before the half, half time to give Nice a lead, but they could not hold on. Now for this video, I'm going to do it. I uh, usually do the um, Conference League first, but I want to actually start in the Europa League because I thought in Conference League there was uh, more talking points than in the Europa League. Uh, which is rather interesting. There were also way more goals scored. So let's start with Feyenoord against Roma, uh, the replay of last season's Conference League final. Two teams that I actually really like, but I have to say this season I'm very much behind Feyenoord. Uh, this came a little bit out of me, but that team is really, really um, close to my heart now. I mean, of course, former last captain being, being there does help as well but that was a rather open and intense game i actually thought that roma for most of the time had a little had, had at least the better chances however what undid roma a little bit is that uh, paulo dibala had to come off very early early on with a groin injury and that kind of took the creativity out of rome up until the point i think roma created more chances also note how i mean I understand that Roma played in black there. However, the shorts were rather mismatched. They were taking the uh, shorts from the away jersey, which were the typical Roma colors, where everything up on top was pink and black. I thought one could have done a little bit better there, but I know New Balance is not going to invest in Roma because they are not. They won't be the supplier for much longer with Adidas stepping in, and so El Sharavi had to come on there as well. Uh, Feyenoord was more dangerous, I felt, on the counter attack where they had a pretty good chance. I think through Shimanski it was, um, but then just before the half, Vifa uh, gets the ball on his hand. A little bit unlucky. It is a penalty. Lorenzo Pellegrini step, steps up, and I'm thinking at this point. This guy usually scores. He is, you can bank on him scoring. Nope, <laughs> he hits it on the post. And that gave a whole lot more momentum to Feyenoord, who came out storming in the uh, second half and really laid siege on the Ro Roman goal and then got uh, um, the the winning goal, what turned out to be the winning goal, with Idris making a run, cutting it back. And Vifa from far out, I mean, he won times, but he makes an a weird bounce, but the egg actually was a pretty good goal uh, to give them uh, the win. So he went from a zero to hero. Uh, also note that at the halftime, Lorenzo Pellegrini had to come off um, with Gini Van Aldum, who is Feyenoord through and through, coming on playing against him, uh, a former team, of course, where he grew up. And then... Tammy Abraham also had to come up in come off injured. A rather, rather rough evening for Roma, who still could have probably gotten an e-kick. This was a very this is a very fine, finely balanced uh tie, I have, have to say. One that we have to look out for. Um and also one where there's plenty of heat between the two teams for sure. Uh Union Saint-Julien held their own. I mean, they hit twice the crossbar uh, in the first, first half. The first one was, was a little, little bit where uh, the goalie um, 
Uh, Radetzky for uh, Leverkusen thought the ball is go easily going over the goal. It was bouncing in front of him and then hits the top of the bar. Okay, what well, that was not a big deal. Um, uh, however, the sack second one was a header that actually should, should, should be in. And uh, Leverkusen had a really, really tough time uh, getting, uh, you know, getting past uh, Union saint who played a really, really good game overall and then took even a lead. And I really think that Union Essential is one of the most interesting teams in Europe, for sure, at this moment. Uh, the only reason why I was rooting more for Leverkusen, which is really, really odd for me, is because I don't have an uh, Essential jersey, more, more or less. And I just saw that they're not, they're actually quite in inexpensive. However, shipping is the killer uh, if you're not living in a neighboring country of Belgium. So, yeah, um, let's see. Boniface gave Union saint the lead and, as I said, Le Leverkusen barely created any chances. And if, I, if, if they did, there was, there was always a pass going awry or, 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 or no, there was not, uh, people weren't following up until Florian Wirtz gets the equalizer a, 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 a second. But this was a little bit more getting out of the jail card than uh, a really fully deserved equalizer. And I have to say, in Belgium, uh, it's gonna be a tough ride for, Le for, for Leverkusen. Uh, almost a similar story for Juve, who they had the first chance, but Sporting created many, many chances and really took the game to two to events. Should have had the lead in the first, first half. There was a little bit of a scary scene with uh, Wojciech Chesney uh, holding his heart and feeling not right. Fortunately, uh, uh, MRI scans showed that everything's all, all right. There's no uh, problem with, with with that, but this was a really, really uh, weird scene. However, Perrin, he made up for uh, that. I mean, the second half, you were diverted better in the game uh, and controlled the game a little, a little bit more, especially when uh, Vlahovic came, came on. It was then Vlahovic also who uh, created a chance, but uh, it was so weird because uh, it is cleared off the line. Then uh, Sporos Benigvena wants to push it away and place it right in, into Gatti, who out of two meters pulls it into net in 73rd, third minute. Maybe at this stage of the game for the second half, this was potentially a deserved lead. However, taking into account how Sporting pressed you were in the first half, it was rather, rather lucky. And then just in stop stoppage time, uh, another two clear, clear shots where Perrin made two great saves. Sporting should have gotten something out of Turin and... I think if you are a Juve fan, you really hope that they get their defensive mojo back because that was not a good showing overall. Uh, maybe the only positive is that you had Pogba coming back on and maybe he is going to do some, something for you. However, the fixture that clearly stole all the headlines was United against Sevilla. Um, but it was not much of a contest for most of, of the time. I mean, they already should have scored in the first uh, minute. It was waved off for offside, rightly so. I think it was Sancho, Sancho was way offside. But then Sabica, an Austrian, scores within uh, in, in the 14th and 21st to give uh, United a comfortable 2 nil lead. And the two or two assists by Bruno Fernandes and then Amar Martial as well as the um, way that uh, Saab Saab the found the space where Ekicic, it was quite nicely played everything. There should have been more. United dominated Sevilla left and right. Should have scored at least two to two, two more in the sec second half. Maybe not as dominant and anymore, but still um, Anthony hit the crossbar. And then I think Ten Hag thought let's play it safe and let's take out a few players like, uh, and like Fernand, who is got a yellow card, cannot play now in the return leg. Uh, Anthony Martial came, came, came off, Jaden Sancho came, came, came off. And you know, with all that, you kind of took the pace out of the game, but you still were kind of thinking you will uh, hang on. And then out, 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 out of nowhere, a uh, run on the right side, uh, Jesus Navas wants to cross it in, hits Malasia and on goal, 84th minute. And then in stoppage time, I mean, NSC had already a header before where the hair needed to make safe. He gets another header, but he actually wanted to play it over to another severe player. However, he hits Harry Maguire's head and this guy just cannot catch a break. 
goes from his head into the net. And it's a 2-2 that was never there. I still would think that United look uh, good in Sevilla. Uh, but they will be without Bruno Fernandes. They already have not Marcus Rashford. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit a tough one. And I think also Rafael Varane didn't look good. So injuries might tilt this tie. It will not be the first time that a Sevilla team does something in, in the Europa League. Whenever they have reached a quarterfinal, they already won. They have won the competition, which is just a crazy, crazy, crazy stat. However, United seem, seem to be the better team. I have to say it as is. This was an absolute freak result. Now, you see it, uh, the return legs are all played next Thursday at 9 o'clock, so there's no early, early, early game there. I think most of these are uh, all of these are rather wide open this will be really really interesting uh to see going forward uh, i also rem want to remind ourselves before we look at the chances um of how the bracket is setting up so we've the win of u.s sporting playing uh united against sevilla and then uh Feyenoord roma against leverkusen union Gilloise. so at the moment i mean by performances i would say sporting against united although juve can do that job and, you know, if United eliminate Sevilla, they basically have eliminated all of uh, La Liga after Barcelona, but is now Se Se Sevilla. Sporting would be also Iberian Peninsula for them. Uh, the other one, honestly, Feyenoord Roma is too close to call. Um, I think Union saint Julas will do Leverkusen. I really have the feeling and yeah. We might get whatever ever it is. Uh, it would be fun to have a Juve Roma final in a way, but I don't think that they, they, this will happen for me. It's uh, United are the favorites to go through there. And on the lower half, I don't know. Uh, I think the winner of Fiena or Roma will make the final. That's how I feel it. However, let's look at overall chances. Juve at the moment, because they have the, the advantage, unlike Ju Juventus, um, uh, unlike United, are now the favorites as a fair fair not and i can both i can see both getting still eliminated so it's a rather wide open field uh united leverkusen on the strength of their ratings but you see united only it's now 50 50 and leverkusen are slight outsiders against union saint julius who have the lowest rating among that bunch but yeah uh it's a very interesting and open europa league it's a similar story in the Conference League, except there's one tie already very much desired, which is the last one here, but we'll talk about that last. I actually want to start with the, in Belgium, with Ghent against West Ham United, which was a really, really crazy, crazy game. I thought that West Ham in the first half were maybe a tad better and had more control of the, of the game, but Ghent were well in the game and created chances. Um, just when Ghent kind of took control over the game, though, West Ham suddenly starts scoring. There was first a uh, goal by Aguirre, where the Ghent goalkeeper was then very much relieved that it was called off for handball because he lets a corner. He thought he called it. He, it falls onto Aguirre and then bounces back up to his hand and into, into the net from a short distance. <sighs> Big breather through, however, a little bit late, later on. From an um, throw in, uh, Jerry Bowen is offside but of course there's no offside with the throw-in and Paul puts it across and, Jer uh, and Ings is short distance can pull it in in the internet and you thought that yeah West Ham is gonna see this through but uh this was a Ghent team that was really well in the game second half is style slow but then Kuipers out of nowhere in the 57th minute gets the equalizer and then Ghent were suddenly pressing and creating ch 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 chances um, however, when Lucas Paqueta comes on, it kind of shows a little bit the difference in <laughs> the squads you can bring on the Brazilian national team. Player Lada get and he almost had created a penalty or at least a red card over or they were let on. Um, however, there was a clear, uh, I think it was Pietkowski who made a great uh, tackle. It was first a gesture foul outside of the box. I think it could, if this would have been a foul, it could have well gone into the box. It would have been a red card if it was a foul, but in the end, it was all good. It was a great last ditch tackle on Paqueta. And it ends 1 1. I think we know that West Ham is probably a much better team than Ghent, but Ghent gave it their all and played quite well in that one. Anderlecht against AZ. This was for me one of those that was rather a uh, tight, tight, tight affair, but uh, this other team is surprising me in Europe. Uh, and 
dominated that game. But that had a really, really hard time hanging, hanging on, and it was Murillo and Ashimero who get the two goals and it was a fully deserved win. I would have hoped that AZ can pull one back because AZ is a really good team in Holland this uh, season. So I did not see that coming and Anderlecht hold a rather decisive advantage there. Uh, of course, there's a return leg to, to be played, but at the moment I would say that Anderlecht will move on there. Uh, it was a super exciting game in Basel um, with, you know, Nice kind of a little bit sluggish at, 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 at the beginning and so Heiko Vogel's side could um, control the game. Uh, Amduni converts a penalty which, which was kind of a, 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 a Todipo a rather a weird, you know, a clumsy tackle. I think it has to be give, give, given the penalty but that act actually gave uh, Nice a kick up the backside and uh, Thuram and Mofi ran a little a little bit uh, wild on Basel and Mofi scores the first one and then after a cross from Laborde he bicycle kicks it into uh, the net really great 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 goal and then makes some flip flops afterwards that alone was worth the entry absolutely this was a absolutely great goal however then again taking it too easy and in the 71st Amduni gets an equalizer um, that was probably not much in the in the cards you could see that Nice is the better team in there however Basel um, fought nicely back and again a game hanging in the in the, in the balance and remember that Basel already against Slovan Bratislava uh, moved moved on with two 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 draws and then a penalty shoe shooter so uh, there watch that space I think Basel could pull the upset over Nice right there. However, for me, the performance and also the atmosphere of the evening was in Poznan. That stadium was rocking. And that first half was played at breakneck speed, going left, right, left, right, uh, creating chances. However, you could always see the Fiorentina are just this tad sharper, a tad sharper, a tad more dangerous. Uh, they took a lead through in the fourth minute through Cabral, where a uh, Gonzalez shot, I think, was saved by the goal. He came, came, came of the, go of the post, and then Cabral puts it in from a short distance. Um, however, Poznan was not to be deterred. Uh, again, it was a, it was an absolute wild, wild game, and uh, Felder gets an e equalizer. However, Nico Gonz Gonzalez of Piragi cross gives Fiorentina before the half the lead again. But that game could have swung uh, at that point either way. However, it has, has as I said, Fiorentina, the much sharper, the much more uh, experienced team there. And it showed in the second half when Bonaventura and uh, Ikone scored two goals, 58th and 63rd, to more or less settle that tie and making it easy on Fiorentina. Easy for the next round. I think Lech Poznan will have a hard time to find a way back. Um, you see the next uh, games also here uh, at Z and Fiorentina play early. So those are the two early, early, early games. Kind of a little bit uh, nicely put because those are also, also the two games that are kind of pre-decided. However, I wouldn't, I think at Z probably have, have a chance. I wouldn't give much to Lech Poznan, but we have seen Valda nights in Europe and then in the uh, evening we have Nice against Basel and West Ham United against Ghent. West Ham United will probably go over uh, Ghent but Nice Basel watch that space I think uh, Basel Basel can pull an upset out of nowhere again I want to remind everyone how the bracket sets up we have the winner of Lech Posen Fiorentina which will be Fiorentina play against Basel Nice it should be Fiorentina Nice however uh, as I said I'm not quite so sure about Basel so this is my personal thing we'll look at the model probabilities a little bit later and then we could have a Belgium duel for the other Sam family so I think West Ham will do Ghent and then Anderlecht will probably uh, go over uh, Z. I still don't see anything but West Ham going into the final. I think I heard yesterday that uh, the only title that West Ham ever won, they also beat Ghent in the quarterfinal. So, you know, duplicity of events. We gotta see, however, they will not play 1860 Munich because 1860 Munich did not qualify for Europe. So let's see the overall chances. Fiorentina are the overwhelming favorites, but 
that's also largely due to them more or less already have qualified for the semi-final with this big away win and Fiorentina are really on the run as I said of all the teams that are still in there when I consider league form and how they've been in Europe this uh this year Fiorentina on a really really good roll and there's a high chance that Fiorentina will end the season with a silverware beat the Coppa Italia or the conference league of course they will take the latter um, eh, I, I don't know, but I think both will qualify for, for the Europa League, uh, which would be a big step up for Fiorentina, for sure. Uh, we see Nice and West Ham have been relatively solid favorites uh, with 75 and 69% uh, underlegged, of course, also big favorites. So, you know, there's a clear tendency where these ties should be going. However, don't underestimate, I, again, don't underestimate Basel. I think Ghent gave West Ham some trouble and West Ham is not a very settled team at this point. And yeah, I don't think that AZ will claw it back. In any case, this was a really, really entertaining evening. Yes, yes I hope you saw a little, little bit of that as well. If anything, watch the Mofi goal or watch the, um, uh, the two own goals by, by, by United, but uh, it's watch highlights. If you can, 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 can find them, I would watch some highlights because it was a very entertaining Goldfield e evening with many uh, weird storylines and I think the Europa League is very finely poised and the Conference League will enter a really really hot stage in the semi-finals. Be it as it may, please let me know what you thought about the action yesterday. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!